Welcome! This tutorial will cover how to fill out Section B of FEMA's Elevation Certificate form correctly. It is part of a broader how-to series focusing on FEMA's Elevation Certificates. More specifically, how CRS would like you to complete them. For a full list of videos in this series, see the video description below. Section B captures all the map information related to the property the building is being built or improved on. The general rule about Section B is that all entries in this section are to be based on the current effective map for the community. Do not use preliminary map information or information from previous flood insurance rate maps or firms. I will explain that point a bit more towards the end of this video. First, let's go through the fields in Section B. B1 must be filled out, and there are only two ways to fill it out correctly. Either by entering just the six-digit NFIP number correctly, or by entering the NFIP number correctly and the name of the correct community. Anything incorrect in this field will cause it to be an error. So the correct NFIP number but the wrong community name, or the correct name but the wrong number, are both wrong. Leaving it blank is also an error. The two must be consistent with each other so that the reviewer knows what community this building is in. An interesting thing to note for this section is that when a community annexes a piece of property, the NFIP number and name should reflect the number and name of the annexing community, not the one the property used to be in. You'll also need to show the correct map number and panel from the firm the information was taken from. This usually comes into play when a community annexes a piece of land and then somebody builds on it. B1 should be the number and the name of the community the property is in now but the rest of Section B will be filled out using the firm that's in effect for that property. If a community annexes land with buildings on them after they are built and you have the ECs for them, be sure to change the community number and name on the ECs and let the homeowner know they can take the EC back to their insurance agent to make sure they are getting the correct CRS discount since they are in a new community now. The next two form fields, B2 and B3, are not required for CRS. The information in B1 tells us exactly where the community is. The county and state are not needed separately. Fields B4 and B5 must be filled out and filled out correctly since this identifies where on the firm to find the property in question. Both the map number and the panel number, 10 characters, must be in B4 while the suffix goes in B5. Most firms are now countywide maps, so if you look at the firm for your community, You'll see the full map and panel number down in the bottom right-hand corner. It consists of the five-digit community identification number for the county, then the letter C to indicate it's a county-wide map, and then the four-digit panel number. The letter at the end of it, G, goes into the next field, B5. If the suffix is in B4 instead of B5, we'll let it go but to be done correctly, the suffix should be by itself in field B5. If the suffix is missing entirely, or if the map and panel number or any part of it is missing, it is an error. And obviously, it needs to be the correct map and panel number for where the building is located in the community. Many times we see just the panel number here. This is wrong. Make sure it's the full map and panel number. Since the firm index date will change each time there is a revision on any of the panels, Field B6 is not required for CRS purposes. What is most important is that we get the effective firm panel date correct, field B7. The date on the effective panel is the date to enter in B7. For the city of Orlando here, you see that the date is June 20, 2018. This makes sure we are looking at the correct flood zone, BFE, and any other information the current effective firm panel would be showing. This must be a date and this field cannot be left blank. It can be entered written out like this or in date format like this. The flood zone in B8 is also required. This is important since the flood zone plays a critical role in determining insurance rates and whether the building is NFIP compliant or not. The flood zone for the building should be identified here, not the flood zone for the property. If a building is in an unnumbered A zone with no BFE determined, or an AO zone, the certifier should be using sections E and F for the elevations and certification of the form. If a building straddles two different flood zones, be sure to enter both flood zones. 
Two or more zones can be entered, but for both insurance and compliance purposes, know that the building will be subject to the most restrictive flood zone. If a building is in an AE zone, but most of the property that it sits on is in an X zone, AE is all that's required to be placed in this field. You do not need to also have an X here, since it does not apply to the building. In any case, something must be filled out in B8 since there is a flood zone for every building. An entry in B9 is also required. Use the Flood Insurance Study Profile, the Floodway Data Table, or the Firm Panel to locate the property and enter the base flood elevation at the site for every building. In some cases, where there is not a BFE, like in unnumbered A and AO zones, other entries are required. So let's take this one by flood zone. For all numbered A and V zones that have BFEs, enter the BFE. For unnumbered A and V zones, where the BFE has not been determined, place NA in this field and place the elevations for the building in section E. For AO zones, enter the flood depth that's on the firm and use section E for the building elevations. In both these cases, the person certifying the elevations should sign and date in section F. Now the EC instructions say that the BFE should be entered to the nearest tenth of a foot. Please encourage all surveyors and engineers to do this. However, for CRS purposes, it is not considered an error if a surveyor records the BFE, which will be a whole number, that's on the firm closest to the building site. Often overlooked on an EC are the next three fields, B10, B11, and B12. Be sure you are reviewing these fields when you see an EC from a surveyor. One of the boxes in B10 must be checked when a BFE is given in B9. B10 asks for the source of the BFE. In other words, where did the surveyor get the BFE? Did it come from the FIS profile, the firm itself, did the community do its own study, or did someone else do a survey? If other source is checked, it must be described in the blank next to it. Checking other source but then leaving it blank is an error. The only time B10 can be left blank and have no boxes checked is when the building is in an unnumbered A zone and no BFE exists for the building site. Otherwise, if this is left unmarked, it will be an error. It is also an error if more than one box is checked, as that is confusing for the reviewer. Likewise, B11, the datum used for the BFE, needs to be checked only when a BFE exists for the building site. Usually, if the firm or FIS profile is shown as the source for the BFE in B10 above, it will either be in the NGVD 1929 or NAVD 1988 datum. Choose the correct one. And like B10 again, if other source is marked, it must be described in the blank next to it. Leaving it empty will be an error. One of the most common errors we see on ECs is when the datum shown here in B11 does not match the datum of the elevations given in section C2, so this field is very important to keep an eye on. And lastly, field B12 is not required for CRS purposes. While it's very important for insurance purposes, it basically tells the insurance agents whether flood insurance can be written for this property or not, Insurance agents are all required to look this up for themselves for each policy on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service website, so therefore it is not required for CRS. Okay, this brings us to the end of Section B, but before we look at common errors we typically see in this section, we want to cover some general issues with Section B. The first one centers on how to fill out Section B when a building permit is under a different firm than the firm in place when the building was completed. Remember the rule from the beginning of this video. Section B must always be filled out using the current firm's information at the time the EC is signed and dated. This causes a little confusion for the certifier of the form when the flood zone or the BFE change during the period of construction. So here's how to handle that and how ECs need to be filled out in these situations. Let's stick with our City of Orlando example and say the information in the left column is the firm information for Orlando at the time the building is permitted. The information in the right column is the firm information at the time the building was completed and the finished construction EC was signed and dated in 2018, right after the new June 20, 2018 firm took effect. You'll notice that the BFE went up with the new firm. This might mean the developer built the lowest floor at 89 feet to satisfy the BFE at the time of permitting, but now that a new firm is in effect and shows the BFE to be at 90, it looks like they have a compliance problem. 
and will be charged much higher rates as a consequence. Here's how to show that on the EC to make sure both a compliance reviewer and an insurance agent gets the correct story. The current firm information at the time the finished construction EC was signed and dated goes in all the required fields in Section B. Be sure to also fill in B10 and B11. Then, in the Section D comments box, you would place all the firm information that was in effect at the time of permitting. Be sure the surveyor explains it and provides fields B1, B4, B5, B7, B8, and B9. Now the EC clearly shows that the building met all requirements at the time of permitting, and it shows the current firm information at the time the form was certified. Let's review which parts of Section B of the EC are required. Required fields include B1, B4, B5, B7, B8, B9, B10, and B11. Fields not required include B2, B3, B6, and B12. There are three common errors we see in Section B. The first one is wrong community numbers or names, or a name and number that don't match up, or one that is completely left blank. Please be sure both are entered in this field and both are correct. This error is one of the most common we see across the country and really has an impact on whether or not the policyholder gets the correct CRS discount you work so hard to achieve. B4 is another common error. Sometimes we see just the first six characters of the map number, or just the panel numbers, or something other than the 10-digit full map and panel number that's supposed to be here. Please be sure the full map and panel number are entered in this field. And lastly, not filling out B10 and or B11 seems to be fairly typical. Or sometimes one field is marked while the other is left blank, or the datum in B11 does not match with the datum in C2. We'll talk about that more in our next video when we cover sections C and D. As a reminder, we will cover how to correct errors once you identify them in a separate training video called How to Correct an Elevation Certificate. Be sure to watch that video for the various ways you can fix any error you see on an EC. The next video in this series will cover sections C and D. Thanks for watching.